Hey, hi, and hello, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. And today's video topic is nepotism, nepotism, specifically in the music and entertainment industry, which for a long time has been a hot topic among music fans. My fondest memories of it in my youth, mostly centered around certain figures in the indie scene back in the day who, you know, were doing very well and making great records. But when you kind of looked into their background, you found out that their parents were, you know, uh, super well to do or connected in uh, music or movies or fashion and were seeing seemingly in a way, be it through uh, economic privilege or just personal connections, kind of giving their kids a leg up in the art world. And traditionally, this whole nepotism thing uh, usually works in one direction with like an older uh, generation, a more successful individual kind of bestowing something uh, in terms of like a privilege or an advantage to their child. And in music circles, there's been a lot of terms and rhetoric for this over the years, be it fans getting angry over an artist who's up and coming and potentially being like an industry plant of some sort, or these artists will often end up getting called Nepo babies. But uh, today we have a bit of a role reversal in regards to that, a Nepo daddy, Mr. Rob Grant, who you may know also as the father of of uh, Lana Del Rey, who at one point was a web entrepreneur who made a lot of money in the 90s and uh, yeah, now seemingly is trying to ride the coattails of his daughter's successful music career into a bit of a music career of his own. This album over here set to be released in June is actually going to be dropping via Universal Records, which you have to wonder, did Lana go to bat to bring this record deal to Rob. Um, uh, let's look at this clip over here of him really embracing his Nepo daddy status <laughs> during what seems like a signing. I am the first Nepo daddy in history. I'm very proud. Rob is really living it up with that Nepo daddy life. However, I do have to come in here with a clarification and say, I don't think Rob is the first Nepo daddy, far from the first, at least in the modern era anyway, because you know we do have other recent examples like Drake's dad who has dropped some bangers. However, thus far it seems that Drake has not pulled the kinds of strings necessary to get his dad uh, a major label deal. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but um, you know, it's, it's seemingly so far Universal has not come through uh, with the uh, Drake dad deal. But regardless of which Nepo daddy came first, we do have this Rob Grant album on the way. He was kind of sneaking his way in music-wise a bit on Lana's Blue Bannisters record because he had a piano contribution over there. Uh, from what I've heard, a lot of this new record is going to be instrumental piano. It's labeled as a classical crossover release on Apple Music. We have two tracks to sample from it thus far, setting sail on a distant horizon as well as the poetry of wind and waves. Uh, there are going to be some Lana features on the LP, but neither of those are available to listen to at the moment, though uh, I'm sure those will be interesting when they are here. But uh, we're going to sample the first two tracks we can here, starting with Setting Sail. Let's hear them out. Ba-bam. Well, okay. Um, you know, this this daddy is definitely nepoing because uh, it, it's clear that um, Rob did not land this deal off of his composition chops. I'll say that much. We'll talk about setting sail first, which essentially sounds like a Lana instrumental without Lana on it. And that's pretty much it. We have a very woeful and steady chord progression, arpeggios too. It kind of cycles through these chords for a while, not really doing much at all, like in terms of progressing and, and building. There are some very faint bits of accompaniment hanging in the background, some very soft tones, some strings, but it's, it's really kind of just like filling space back there. The piano is in the forefront, sounding really rich and really nice. The engineering is great. I'll give the recording Recording that the engineering's fantastic for sure. If these songs are any indicator, this Rob Grant record will sound very good. But in terms of his uh, playing or his writing, there's just really not 
a lot here. I mean, if I had to describe it other than saying it's, you know, just a Lana track without Lana, uh, it also just sort of feels like a generic music bed for uh, maybe a teary eyed scene in a drama film. And look, not to hate on the song just for merely being simple or uh, whatever. I, I think there are a lot of great songs and tunes out there that have very simple, basic building blocks at their foundation. Uh, but the problem is like, there's not really a whole lot built upon the pianos and the very faint strings on this track as a composition and as a two minute and 38 second piece, it's very basic and it's very meager. Rob isn't really giving us a whole lot to chew over uh, outside of the track sounding, um, I guess production wise, really good. It feels a little phoned in and I'm kind of getting similar vibes off of the poetry of wind and waves. I mean, it is a bit of a switch up because the strings take more of a lead role uh, than a supportive role on this track. But as a result of that, the piano playing is even more painfully basic, really like a first year piano student, honestly. And not that Rob uh, needed to pull out the technical chops on these tracks, but like, I don't know, pull out something. Don't just bore me to tears with these ultra simple odes to the ocean. I mean, for sure these tracks would sound pretty good set to a uh, fuzzy black and white footage of, uh, you know, waves crashing against rocks and uh, stuff like that. But just on their own, they're really not that interesting and frankly, kind of uninspired. Uh, there might be some hidden gems deeper in the track list that remains to be seen. Uh, but if I'm, you know, a betting man, I'm going to say the Lana features on this record are probably going to be the most interesting moments. And let's hear those when they drop. But up until now, um, again, the Nepo Daddy levels are just crazy. We're at like, you know, code red Nepo Daddy. We're at DEFCON 1 Nepo Daddy. And um, I, I guess I will leave it there. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments on this one. If you've heard these tracks, any thoughts, any, um, you know, nepotism that you've experienced lately that's going well for you, uh, let me know. Okay. Love you. You're the best. Anthony Fantano, Rob Grant, uh, forever.